Welcome to the Listening Tube. Hello, thank you for putting your ear to the Listening Tube. I'm your host, Bob Woodley. On this episode, we'll hear about variations of the American flag, China, the definition of news, and more. But first, not the headlines. More than 27 million people watched President Joe Biden's State of the Union speech last week. I must admit, I was one of the people who didn't watch. Not because I wasn't interested, but because my wife took me to see a Pittsburgh Penguins hockey game where they beat the Colorado Avalanche in overtime. And they didn't stop the hockey game so we could watch the president. Anyway, while more than 27 million people did watch, and that's according to the Nielsen numbers, as quoted in a story by Deadline.com, it's a significant drop from the audience of the last one. Even though 16 networks broadcast the speech, same as last time, this year's audience was 29% lower. More than 38 million people watched last year, There was another event happening at the same time, other than the hockey game where I was. It was another sporting event during which LeBron James broke the NBA scoring record, and that game had an estimated 3 million viewers. But the game didn't start until the president's speech was more than half over. So why the decline? Isn't there enough going on in the world right now that people are beginning to become bored with politics? Is it because things are going so well that people are no longer interested in what the government is doing? I'm sure there are some people who see it that way. Joe Biden has finally righted the ship, and now we can just float along until the next election. No reason to tune in. I'll catch the highlights tomorrow. No reason to tune in. I'll just ask my friends who think the same way I do to fill me in on what I missed. By contrast, the same information company that counts the number of people who watch the State of the Union address also counts how many people watch the Super Bowl every year. This year's tally, 113 million people, compared to 27 million people. If it were a basketball score, 113 to 27, that would be considered a blowout, and rightly so. But that's like comparing apples to oranges. Let's compare apples to apples. The 27 million who watched President Biden is the lowest number for a State of the Union speech in the last 30 years. That means you would have to go back to the last century, nay, the last millennia, to find a less popular State of the Union address. That would have been the last State of the Union address by George H.W. Bush, closing out two terms of his presidency. A lame duck, two-term president 30 years ago, was the lowest rating until this year's first-term second-year president. To have 11 million people jump off the Biden bandwagon in a single year has to send a signal to the administration that the union isn't as strong as they say it is. 11 million people weren't at that hockey game that kept me from watching. 11 million people weren't tuning in to the pregame show of an NBA game. Where did they go? That's a hard question to answer. But maybe we can narrow it down by taking a closer look at the people who did watch President Biden's State of the Union address. The same Nielsen number cited in the article of Deadline says that about 73% of the viewers were 55 years old or older. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, those baby boomers always stick together. Well, that may be true, but I'll remind you that boomers are now 60 years old and older, so it would seem that the 55 to 60-year-olds are cozying up to the boomers. Still, that leaves only 27% of the remaining viewers below the age of 55. More specifically, 19% of viewers were between 35 and 54, and only 5% were under age 34. I find it interesting that the bulk of those interested in the state of our union are over age 55, while those making the most demands of our government, our social programs, and other amenities are younger people who can't even bother to watch the State of the Union address.
Let's go back through the listening tube for This Week in History. This week, last year, in 2022, the Listening Tube podcast began. Yes, this podcast right here. I waited until the Super Bowl was over so that I could devote a bulk of my extra time to writing and producing it. Football season is busy for me, as I also call high school football games on local radio. I prepared for the program months in advance, recording the sound effects you hear under the mysterious female voice, who is featured in between segments. The reason I started the listening tube is because I was disappointed with the news coverage I was witnessing on television. When I was growing up, and as a young broadcast journalist, newscasters cared about their own credibility more than anything. Today's news people seem more interested in becoming a part of the news cycle rather than an objective describer of what happened. That's why we've lost a lot of our trust in the larger media companies, who have more to lose from their sponsors than they have from losing their morals. I summed up my views on the subject early so that you would know where I stood before you considered whether or not to devote some of your time to me. Here's how I said it on episode 6. March 20th, 2022. There's a lot of talk these days about the mainstream media, the news it delivers, and whether or not we should trust it. When I was a young man learning about broadcasting, there was a simple definition of the news. Information about current events the public wants or needs to know. Information 